The Pathless was updated on the 10th of February for Apple M1 based Macs. Version 1.0.7 includes a native ARM build and general performance improvements for M1 based Macs. Today, we're going to have a look at the new performance on offer. Originally, the path list was teased back in January 2019 when Apple Arcade was first announced. It wasn't until November 2020 that it finally released on Apple Arcade alongside Windows PC and PlayStation 4 and 5. It was one of the key games Apple used when promoting Apple Arcade as it combined both high-class indie and AAA production value. It's from the creators of Abzu, and it is a mythic open-world adventure, all about an archer and an eagle. Together, you will explore a vast forest, and will try to dispel a curse of darkness that has taken a hold of the world. Compared to other open-world adventure games, its unique gameplay mechanic is how it involves shooting at talismans to move faster, to find stuff, and to solve puzzles. At first glance, it might remind you of Breath of the Wild, but this game literally has no map and no fast travel option. There is basically no HUD either. It's not the most complex game, and it's quite short, but it is the definition of a high quality indie game with immersive and fun exploration and gorgeous graphics. It was also a good showcase of what an indie dev could do with Unreal Engine 4. Most games on Apple Arcade either use their own internal proprietary engine or run on Unity, but a few high-end games do use Unreal Engine. On PlayStation 5, the game supports two graphics modes. Performance runs the game in a variable resolution with a target frame rate of 60 FPS. It's not a completely lock 60 FPS, mind you, but it's definitely close. Resolution runs the game at 4K and 30 FPS. I can hardly tell the difference between performance mode in terms of how it looks graphically. So performance mode is kind of the way to go on PS5. HDR is available for the game on PlayStation 2, but it was never available for the Mac port and it still isn't. On PS4, the game runs as is. I can't confirm what resolution it targets, but the frame rate isn't 60 FPS. I have a PS4 Pro, so its frame rate may be a little better than what you'd see on the original PS4 or PS4 Slim. Sometimes it's above 30 FPS, but the frame pacing is not great. I wish Giant Squid locked the frame rate to 30, this would allow for a smoother experience. The draw distance here isn't as good either, but you can get by, and most of the visual effects from PS5 are still on display here. On iOS, the game runs at a fixed low quality preset and 30 FPS. You can't manually change any graphical settings. Basically, what you see is what you get. It sucks, as the game honestly could look so much better, especially on the latest iPhone and iPads. In version 1.0.7, Giant Squid have improved the frame rate on iOS as well, and it's almost a locked 30 FPS now, instead of having bad frame pacing in the past. Thankfully on Mac, you have the ability to change different graphical options, render resolution, environment, load distance, textures, post-process, effects, anti-aliasing, shadows, and v-sync. You can switch between low, high, and ultra with most settings. It's bizarre to me that there are no medium settings available for any of these quality options. It's not really a problem for M1 Pro and M1 Max, but it is when you're trying to optimize the game for the first M1 chip. Version 1.0.7 adds support for next-gen controllers too, such as the PlayStation 5 DualSense wireless controller and the Xbox wireless controller Series S and Series X. This includes rumble vibration for these controllers as well. Previously, rumble vibration was only available for older controllers. 
Just like if you play on PlayStation with a controller, when you shoot your arrow at the targets, you'll feel a vibration in your controller for explosions. What's not available is adaptive triggers for the sensation of pulling the bow. Hopefully, this can be added in the future as technically Apple supports haptic vibration on iOS and Mac. The game looks to fully run on the Metal Framework now. I say this because in the past, I think it didn't actively use Metal as OpenGL was seen in the game's files. I believe it's a requirement by Apple for all games on Apple Arcade to support Metal, so I have no idea why they allowed the game to ship in this state. OpenGL is still in the game's files for the ARM build, but I doubt it's being used under the ARM architecture. Regardless, with the game running on ARM, the performance is, wow, dramatically better and a good showcase of the benefits of transitioning your app to fully support Apple Silicon. On my 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, it gets 45 to 60 FPS at 1080p high running through the Rosetta 2 build. Now it gets a near locked 120 FPS at 1080p Ultra. On my 14 inch MacBook Pro, here is a comparison between 1080p Ultra with the ARM build and the Rosetta build. Still a massive improvement. On the first M1 chip, the difference isn't as dramatic with plus 5 to 8 FPS, but it removes a lot of the big FPS drops when you initially load the world and during explosions. Honestly, this performance update on M1 Pro and M1 Max in particular is one of the most impressive cases of optimization I've ever seen. I know it's just an indie game, but holy moly. Playing the game on M1 Max is an absolute delight to some degree. If you play on your MacBook Pro's display, Giant Squid are targeting its default display resolution. On my 16-inch MacBook Pro, the resolution is stuck at 1728 by 1117. The game doesn't take the MacBook Pro's notch into account either. At least you're playing at a resolution above 1080p. At this resolution and ultra settings, the game gets 120 FPS on average. It's an almost locked frame rate too, with some dips during challenging scenes. If you play on an external monitor, you're free to choose any resolution supported by your display. For me, on my 120Hz display and running the game at 1080p and Ultra Graphics, we're seeing an almost locked 120fps. It's not crazy to believe the Pathless might get above 120fps on let's say a 144Hz monitor, but I don't have the right tools at my disposal to test this. No, I'm sorry. At 1440p and Ultra, the game hits between 42 to 52 FPS. I think the game in this state is workable. It's a decent enough frame rate to easily maneuver the world and a high enough resolution to fully appreciate the Ultra graphics. If you want closer to 60 FPS on average, you'll have to play at high settings. Furthermore, M1 Max is the only Apple Silicon chip that supports 4K resolution for the Pathless. You'll want to make sure you play at high graphics to get 30 FPS on average. Playing the game on an M1 Pro chip is a massive improvement over the original M1 chip, which we'll look at later in the video. It has the same issue with being unable to change the resolution on the MacBook Pro's display. So on my 14 inch MacBook Pro, the resolution is stuck at 1512 by 982 and it doesn't take the notch into account. It's not all bad as at this resolution, the game gets about 120 FPS on average. At 1080p on my 120 Hertz external monitor and ultra graphics, we're seeing anywhere from 70 to sometimes up to 120 FPS, but it's usually only a little over 100. I have the 8 core CPU and 14 core GPU model, so I imagine the next models up will do a little better. If you don't care about a very high frame rate, 
you can play at 1440p high and you'll get about 30 to 40 FPS on average. Most games of this caliber on the baseline M1 Pro chip usually don't perform this well at 2K and max settings. So to see this, I'm very happy. The majority of you watching will be playing the pathless on the original M1 chip. Again, if you play on a 13 inch MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, Giant Squid have made 1440 by 900 as the default resolution and you can't go higher. For some reason though, you can choose a lower resolution on these machines, but not a higher one. Anyway, in this state at high graphics, the game gets 30 to 40 FPS on average. If you're playing on an external monitor or a 24 inch iMac or a Mac mini, you should use the settings you see on screen to get close to 30 FPS on average. The difference between performance on an 8GB or 16GB config or a 7 core GPU isn't going to be that different. I also strongly suggest changing your display to 30Hz from 60Hz if you're playing on an external monitor. Just don't forget to put it back to 60Hz when you're finished playing the game. This will allow the Pathless to use considerably less resources to get a higher frame rate. Why Giant Squid never added in an option to lower the refresh rate or to limit the frame rate in game is beyond me. If you desperately want 60 FPS, I suggest playing at 900p and low. The game doesn't look nearly as good with low settings enabled, but it's on par with the iOS version graphically. So if you're comfortable with that, maybe you'll be fine. Basically, don't expect this ARM version to create a, a massive miracle on the first M1 chip. It's better, but as I said earlier, it's by like three to plus FPS, and you won't see as many massive FPS drops in certain scenes. I just wish Ultra Graphics was possible at at least at 900p, or maybe 1080p high and a nice 30 FPS would be uh, good to see too, but alas, maybe I'm being too optimistic. I thought perhaps the Pathless was using a large amount of system memory on macOS, and this could be causing bottlenecks on this M1 chip, but nope, the game only uses 5.13 gigabytes in peak. What do you think of this M1 update for the Pathless? Are you impressed? Disappointed? Have you played this game before? Let me know what you think in the comments. This video took a long time to make, analyzing the game on various M1 Macs for days on end, so be sure to leave a like to show your support. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications as I'll be putting out more Apple Arcade reviews in the near future. My name is Chewie, and thanks for watching.